Hello everyone. Welcome to lecture series of Engineering Graphics and Design. Myself Ankur Patel and today in this 8th session of Engineering Curves, we will continue Cycloidal Curves. In our last session of Cycloidal Curves, we have discussed the cycloid. And in today's session of Cycloidal Curves, we will discuss Epicycloid and Hypocycloid. So let's start with the Epicycloid. So what is Epicycloid? It is the locus of a point on the circumference of the rolling circle which rolls without slipping or sliding outside the another circle. So the rolling circle is known as the generator and the circle on which our circle rolls is known as the directing circle. So here in this animation you can see that if the circle rolls on the another circle without slipping or sliding then the curve traced out by the point which is on the circumference of the rolling circle is epicycloid and in epicycloid if we will take the point inside the circumference of the rolling circle then the curve generated will be inferior epitrochoid and in this epicycloid if we will take the point outside the circumference of the rolling circle then the curve generated will be superior epitrochoid so inferior epitrochoid and superior epitrochoid. Now let's start with the problem of the epicycloid. So the given data is a circle of 50 mm diameter rolls on another circle of 150 mm diameter and outside of it. Trace the locus of a point on the circumference of the rolling circle for one revolution. Name the curve. Now you can see that this statement reveals the definition of the epicycloid. So the curve will be the epicycloid. So the given data is uh, diameter of the rolling circle or generating circle is 50 mm. So the radius of the uh, generating circle will be equal to 25 mm and diameter of the directing circle is 150 mm. So the radius will be equal to 75 mm. So first of all draw a circle having radius is equal to 75 mm which is known as the directing circle by taking center at O. After drawing the directing circle now draw the uh, rolling circle over here having radius is equal to 25 mm. So this will be our generating circle which is going to be rolled on the directing circle for one revolution. So when our circle uh, completes one revolution it will cover 2 pi r distance on the directing circle. 2 pi into small r. And we can also say that it will cover capital R into theta distance on the directing circle which is the r length of the directing circle for one revolution of the rolling circle. So we can say that r into theta which is equal to 2 pi into small r. So theta is equal to 2 pi r upon capital R which is equal to 360 degree into 25 upon 75. So we can say that theta will be equal to 120 degree. So by taking this line as a baseline draw an angle of 120 degree over here. So when our rolling circle uh, completes one revolution starting from here it will reaches over here after completing the one revolution. So after showing the angle theta, now divide this rolling circle into 8 equal parts. As our circle is going to roll in the clockwise direction, give the numbering starting from 0 in the anti-clockwise direction on the rolling circle. Because the first division which is going to be in contact with the directing circle will be this point. So give the numbering in the anti-clockwise direction 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Now as we have divided the rolling circle into 8 equal parts, we have to divide this theta angle into 8 equal parts also. That means 120 degree angle divided by 8 and draw the line connecting 0. So after dividing the theta angle into 120 degree, now mark P0 point over here and C0 over here. And after marking this point, taking center at O, radius is equal to O to 4, draw an arc. Taking center at O, radius is equal to O to C0, give an arc and show the final position of the circle over here. After showing the final position of the circle, now again take the center at O, radius is equal to O to 3 or O to 5, O to 3 or O to 5, draw another arc. Radius is equal to O to 2 or O to 6, draw another arc. Now radius is, uh, sorry, center at O, radius is equal to O to 1 or O to 7 draw one another arc. Now after drawing this arc, mark the intersection point of the center arc to the division of this angle. So mark these points. These are the centers of the rolling circle. 
which are C1, C2, C3, C4, C5, C6, C7 and C8. And after marking these centers of the rolling circle, now measure the radius of the rolling circle and take center at C1, give an arc or cut an arc on the arc passing from the first division of the circle over here. We have to give the uh, arcs in the clockwise direction and uh, each time we have to take the radius is equal to radius of the rolling circle. So now take the center at C2 and radius is equal to radius of the rolling circle. Give an arc on the arc passing from the second division of the circle. This will be our P1. So now give an arc. This will be our second division of the circle. So this will be our P2. Now taking center at C3. Radius is equal to the radius of the rolling circle. Give an arc on the arc passing from the third division of the circle. This will be our P3. Take center at C4. Give an arc passing from the or give an arc on the arc passing from the fourth division of the circle over here. This will be our P4. Now take center at C5. Give an arc on the arc passing from the fifth division of the circle over here. This will be our P4. Take center at C6. Give an arc on the arc passing from the sixth division of the circle. This will be our P6. Now take center at C7 and give an arc on the arc passing from the seventh division of the circle over here this will be our p7 and while taking the center at c8 and we will give the arc from c8 we will get the point over here this will be our p8 now uh, draw the freehand curve passing from p0 p1 p2 p3 p4 p5 p6 p7 p8 we will get the epicycloid so this curve will be the epi cycloid now let's move on to next curve hypocycloid so what is hypocycloid so it is a locus of a point on the circumference of the rolling circle which rolls without slipping or sliding inside the another circle known as hypocycloid so in this figure you can see that if the circle rolls on the another circle and inside of it then the curve traced out by the point which is on the circumference of the rolling circle is hypocycloid. So this curve will be the hypocycloid. And in hypocycloid, if we will take the point inside the circumference of the rolling circle, then the curve generated will be inferior hypotroquine. And in hypocycloid, if we will take the point outside the circumference of the rolling circle, then the curve generated will be superior hypotroquine. So these are the definition of inferior hypotrochoid and superior hypotrochoid. So let's start with the problem of the hypocycloid. So the given contain is a circle of 50 mm diameter rolls on the another circle 150 mm diameter and inside of it. Trace the locus of a point on the circumference of the rolling circle for one revolution. So the given data is radius of the uh, generating circle is 25 mm and radius of the detecting circle is 75 mm so again first of all draw uh, the uh, detecting circle having radius is equal to 75 mm from by taking center at o after drawing this uh, detecting circle now inside of the detecting circle draw rolling circle having radius is equal to 25 mm now our rolling circle is going to roll inside the directing circle for one revolution. So it will cover a arc length of 2 pi r on the directing circle. Or we can say that for the directing circle the arc length will be r into theta. So we have to find out that theta. So r theta is equal to 2 pi r. Again the equation will remain same. So r theta is equal to 2 pi r. Theta is equal to 2 pi small r upon capital R. Which is equal to 360 degree into 25 upon 75. So the again uh, as per the calculation the angle will be 120 degree. So now measure 120 degree angle from this baseline. And mark this point. So when our uh, rolling circle completes one revolution. It will reach is over here. So after showing this angle now divide the rolling circle into it equal parts and as the rolling circle is going to roll in the anti-clockwise direction we have to give the numbering starting from zero over here in the clockwise direction because the first division which is going to be in contact with the directing circle will be this division so we have to give the numbering starting from zero one two three four five six seven in the 
clockwise direction. Now, as we have divided the rolling circle into eight equal parts, we have to divide this angle theta into eight equal parts also and draw the lines from by taking O as the center. After dividing the uh, angle theta into 120 degree, now mark the center of the circle C0 and draw the arc by taking center at O, radius is equal to O to C0 and mark the final position of the rolling circle over here. After marking the final position of the rolling circle, now mark the intersection point of this arc to the division that we have taken of this 120 degree angle. So mark these points of intersection of this arc and these divisions. This has C1, C2, C3, C4, C5, C6, C7, C8. And as we know that these are the centers of the rolling circle. Now after marking this divisions now take center at o radius is equal to o to 1 given arc take center at o radius is equal to o to 2 given arc take center at o radius is equal to o to 3 given arc take center at o radius is equal to o to 4 given arc after drawing this arc now this will be our p0 point now Measure the radius of the rolling circle, which is C0 to P0, which is equal to 25 mm. Take center at C1 and give an arc on the arc passing from the first division of the circle. So this will be about P1. Now uh, uh, take center at C2, give an arc on the arc passing from the second division of the circle. And in this, uh, we have to give the arc in the anti-clockwise direction because our circle is rolling in the anti clockwise direction so this will be our p2 now take center at c3 give an arc on the arc passing from the third division of the rolling circle so this will be our p3 take center at c4 give an arc on the arc passing from the fourth division of the circle so this will be our p4 take center at c5 and give an arc on the arc passing from the fifth division of the circle so this will be our p5 take center at c6 and give an arc on the arc passing from the 6th division of the circle. So this will be our P6. Take center at C7 and give an arc on the arc passing from the 7th division of the circle. This will be our P7. Take center at C8 and if we will give an arc on the arc passing from the 0th or 8th division of the circle, we will get the arc over here. This will be P8. Now draw the free hand curve passing from P0, P1, P2, P3, P4, P5, P6, P7 and P8 will get the hypocycloid. So the curve will be the hypocycloid. And in hypocycloid, if the radius of the rolling circle is half than the radius of the directing circle, then the hypocycloid generated will be the straight line. So this is it for today. Here we are closing the chapter of engineering curves. Thank you for watching. In our next lecture, we will come with the new topics. Till then, take care.